Ladies and gentlemen, for a session sponsored by the Accenture Amadeus Alliance, please welcome from Seabury Consulting and Corporate Advisory, John Luth. From United Airlines, Kajel Narsima. From Amadeus, Meg O'Keefe. And from Etihad, Tristan Thomas, in discussion with Skiftex, Jeremy Cressman. Okay, uh, welcome to this afternoon's panel on the merchandising of ancillaries in the airline industry. Just a quick second, I want to ask, does everybody know what an ancillary is? Raise your hands, maybe? Okay, most of you, some of you. Generally speaking, it's a you know, package of services that are sold along the main purchase for your trip, like a, a flight. So um, I want to start today's discussion by setting the agenda a little bit. And I think it's well known to many of us that ancillary revenues are incredibly important for the airlines. I actually saw a statistic recently. We're expecting ancillary revenue to keep growing in the airline industry by 15% between 2017, 2021. Um, but I think, unfortunately, the tactics that are being used right now to generate that ancillary revenue, those can at times cause problems with things like customer satisfaction with the passengers. And that can impact the airline's brand image. So in order to prevent this, more airlines are now shifting towards what's being called a retail mindset. And this is more than simply bundling or unbundling different offers for ancillaries together. What we're actually talking about here is understanding and serving customers differently based on their unique needs. So to do this, I think airlines now need to become hyper-relevant. We're going to talk about that concept of hyper-relevance in a minute. And really, in a nutshell, it means meeting the ever-changing expectations of customers and putting offers into context so the customers can actually design the journeys that they want to take. This is also where smarter retailing and optimization comes in, encompassing things like dat the data-driven creation, pricing, placement, and promotion of offers related to airline flights. So in today's panel, we're going to discuss some of the most forward-thinking airlines and what they're doing to create winning strategies related to ancillary revenue, how they envision themselves moving forward with the development of offers, and how they're leveraging new technologies like machine learning and artificial intelligence. So with that, I will stop talking and uh, turn over a few questions to our panelists here. Um, guys, why don't we start by talking about the connection between ancillary revenue and airline brand perception, right? Uh, there's this misperception, I think, that when you unbundle different parts of the airline experience, people say that this concept is kind of a cliche term, nickel and diming. Um, you know, these are things that people might have been historically including their ticket price, but are there things, do you think that uh, ancillary adoption and high brand perception are mutually exclusive? Well, I, I really, really hope that they're not mutually exclusive because uh, at Etihad, we're putting the idea of a customer being able to adapt their customer experience at the heart of our strategy going forward. And in fact, in uh, a couple of weeks, we'll launch a new brand campaign with the word choice as a tagline. Mm. So, I mean, we, we believe that it, it contributes to the guest experience. And, and if I, today we've seen lots of research that says that customers are looking to be able to personalize and customize, and every industry is trying to do it. So for me, it's not credible for a, a customer to uh, not be able to do that for a 16-hour flight, right? I mean, you, you, it's a long time to, to spend in the air and receive a one-size-fits-all proposition. And I, and I think that negative perception has, been, has become um, a predominant because low-cost carriers brought it to our industry. And the idea was a bare-bones product augmented by additional ancillaries. But we, we want to change that conversation to customize your experience as opposed to um, paying for extra things. Hmm. That makes sense. Kajil, I know you actually had some thoughts on this topic. Yeah, at United, we've actually found that customers who buy ancillary products have a higher customer satisfaction compared to customers who don't. And so it's really important for us to create products and services that resonate with our customer, as well as create a buying experience that caters to their different needs. And machine learning has really unlocked that for us and allowed us to scale up to the individual. Mm -hmm. So if you think about, like, you know, I'll give you two examples. Um, last year, we introduced dynamic bundles. And we had a choice of 14 bundle offers that we could give our customers. And we used machine learning to determine which best two offers to give the customer based on the customer profile, their trip details, and a variety of other factors. We also use machine learning a fair bit to optimize for creatives. And this is really important more from uh, enabling our customers to understand our product better. For example, for our extra legroom seat, if you're a business traveler, you might very well get a creative that shows the customer 
working on their computer. Whereas if you're traveling with your family, you might get a creative that uh, looks like a person, a parent uh, playing a game with their child. So it's really trying to bring home the message that this is a product that caters to your needs. Hmm. Yeah, we'll talk more about machine learning and artificial intelligence in just a minute. I think that's a great introduction yeah. to that. Um, I, actually, I also want to introduce this topic of hyper-relevance, right? And I think John knows quite a bit about this. Can you tell us a little bit about what this is and why it's different from previous strategies of personalization? Yeah, I, I, I just had an image as that you were talking about that I had this, uh, like, you know, the X, you know, where you're not supposed to be doing something. Yeah. And as a parent, I had my wife think, yeah, I'm supposed to, not supposed to be on the computer, right? I'm supposed <laughs> to be playing with it. So anyway, um, hyper-relevance. So, um, it is, you know, as, as Jeremy uh, summarized, it, it's really not just personalization, it's personalization in the context of where the traveler is, right? So if, we're, if you're pushing out something and you're on a business trip, it has nothing to do with your business trip and it isn't helpful, that's probably a wasted opportunity, actually may be very annoying and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it really, in this world, where we're going with technology is, uh, being able to really make the traveler not just feel recognized and special, uh, but actually we're delivering something that's helpful for them. And so uh, Accenture, which Seabury is now part of, um, has done uh, quite a bit of research in this area um, as part of our alliance with, uh, with Amadeus. Uh, we've really come across some fairly startling results. So three out of four travelers actually say they notice when a travel company is trying to be relevant to them. That's pretty high respondent rate, particularly when you say a lot of them would have said, well, what's relevance and particularly what's mm -hmm. hyper-relevance. And the corollary to that is they say very few travel companies are actually doing it. And the third piece, which is really startling, is 60%. So six out of 10 travelers said they would actually shift from the current preferred provider to someone who was trying to be relevant and was delivering relevancy to them. So that's a lot of revenue out there in play um, that is either an opportunity or a threat, depending on where you are in that spectrum of becoming hyper-relevant. Hmm. Uh, I want to ask about the complexity of doing this, right? You know, we think about this topic, we envision all this technical resources that need to be purchased, you know, cross-functional teams that need to be created, right? But I'm wondering, are there some small steps that, you know, if I'm an airline executive, I could take immediately to get started on this path towards making smarter offers for customers? Well, Meg, maybe? Well, I think there's, um, I, I think the first thing is it, it can be a pretty big and daunting task, actually, if you're going to go after a, a strategy in the airline, which is to have an omni-channel, customer-centric offer optimization uh, direction and approach. It's going to be multi-year strategy. It's going to require uh, the systems, uh, the organizations. Um, it's going to require the brand presence. It's going to require the business models. Um, all operating in this kind of world, the shifting world of the what's going on in the industry with the NDC and all of all of the uh, changes in the uh, personalized personalization and the security. Um, how the technology is shifting, but also how the customer behavior is changing. Mm -hmm. So when you put it all together like that, it is, can be a pretty big undertaking. And then one of the key things, I think, is that it doesn't have to be the end game. It is possible to start small. It is possible to put together an approach which allows to build up on the assets that the airline has already, to capitalize on the products that are sold in the places they're sold and say, hang on a second, we can do things better with what we've got. And one of the things um, that Amadeus uh, does is obviously we provide the, the solutions uh, for airlines and also for the distribution um, or the travel agencies, uh, organizations as well as hotels, but we provide the solutions to airlines and have that deep knowledge on the industry, mm -hmm. on, on the way that those systems work. And when we couple it with um, Accenture, um, who has the expertise in the area of digital and the area of analytics, we can really start to tackle some of these big problems and actually help airlines to sort of frame out where they want to go, to say, let's go through what you have today, let's have a think about how you can do it better. And I'll give you an example. Is, is, uh, 
not so long ago, this year, we were working with um, Scandinavian Airlines, so a European airline, a network carrier, who kind of operates in the fairly standard airline environment of selling ancillaries to the flight sale, post-purchase. And they said, we'd really like to understand what could we do better? How could we increase our revenue adoption per passenger if we change the pricing? And we have a static price across lots of different routes, but we want to see what happens if we start to alter the price. So we worked with, um, between Amadeus with Accenture and with um, Scandinavian Airlines and started to look through the routes and, and where they were flying to, how much they were selling to, started to really collect the data, to do some models, to test those, and to run different types of pricing scenarios on those routes. And just by doing just advanced seats as a product and running this type of analysis, we're able to sort of project with them, and they've implemented it now, a 15% revenue uplift over a year, just on changing the prices on the advanced seats. Mm. So it can be quite simple. So it sounds like, uh, I was gonna actually ask you about the Amadeus Accenture Alliance, which you're doing, but it sounds like you already kind of, that was a pretty good summary of what you guys are up to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well there's actually, the Amadeus Accenture Alliance is, is built around lots of different mm -hmm. uh, angles. Merchandising is a key one, and what we're really focusing on is bringing together the technology, um, the digital assets, mm -hmm. and, the, uh, and the data of uh, Accenture, and putting it together, and driving innovative products and solutions. For sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I was curious uh, to talk a bit more about this topic of machine learning and artificial intelligence, right? You know, we talk so much about these terms, but it's often in, abs in an abstract sense. And, you know, Kajili, you gave a great example before. Anything else to add about how these two technologies are actually being deployed to make the experience better for customers? I think it's across the board. So, I, I mean, we've been using it to just make it easier for customers to pick their choice. So when you come on a seat map today um, and you want to pick one of our seating products, an extra leg room, or if you want to pick an upgrade product, um, normally you would have to go and look for that seat, try and figure out which one is interesting to you. What we've done with machine learning is we know a lot about what you've picked in the past. So you know whether you prefer aisle seats or window seats or what preferences you've given us in the past. And so we make recommendations to you based on your previous uh, choices or what people like you are looking, this might be the best seat for you. Mm -hmm. And we've seen an increase in how people are taking us up on it. We've seen, again, a double-digit increase just because it's made it easier for customers to pick and to uh, transact with us. Yeah. So I, I would add to that, um, so going back to the uh, partnership with, with Amadeus, what, what we're really doing is we, we were married up, so we mentioned Seabury and Accenture, probably haven't explained the relationship. So Seabury is something I founded 23 years ago. It became part of Accenture uh, 18 months ago. We really just got our sea legs, and I'd say in the last three to six months, we've really started to go very heavy into this relationship, so we're, we're very much in the business, front-end strategy and consulting, working with Amadeus and its customers to say, how can we be more relevant? So working in partnership with, um, um, uh, partnerships with, uh, with the likes of United or Etihad or others to say, um, how do we speed that journey? Because mm -hmm. it's a journey everyone has to be on, and um, frankly, right now, it's being done very uh, balkanized way. Um, and in fact, there are things that should be and re will remain very proprietary and individual to airlines. But there are a lot of things mm -hmm. that are uh, common, right? Um, and, um, and trying to find those, uh, respect the proprietary nature of certain things mm -hmm. while, while, um, while smoothing the, the pace. Mm -hmm. And part of that is uh, applying artificial intelligence, robotics, all these things, mm -hmm. which already apply to a lot of other industries. Um, something as close within the travel would be hospitality. Um, and artificial intelligence. Uh, there was a, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Steve Fernell, spoke uh, this morning about the carnival um, relationship, but um, more broadly in health science and some other things where Accenture is very deep, we're taking that capabilities and then taking it back in and working in partnership with Amadeus to say, how do we deliver that much, much faster um, as part of this rollout? Mm -hmm. And I'd add, the other, you know, historically, and I'm a former chief financial officer of an airline, um, historically, trying to get the best of class was 
was really where you wanted to go, right? Well, best of classes really today is thinking where the world will be in mm -hmm. five years because it's gonna take five years of pretty heavy investment to try to get there, which means entirely different than where we see today. Mm -hmm. And so in many respects, you're looking broadly elsewhere in other industries to say, where are they and what can we adopt very, very quickly rather than reinventing the wheel ourselves yeah. as an industry. And I think customer expectations are different. They're no longer comparing us to another airline, they're comparing us to every other transaction that they do right. in the broader universe. So I think that's changed the game for a lot of us. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I actually wanna ask Tristan, I had a question for you. You know, we've talked a lot about how airlines are figuring out this new model. I also wanna talk about how customers play into this. Because I'm wondering, is it always the responsibility of the airline to create the offers in this model? I'm curious if you see any opportunities for you know, the customers to actually participate in some sense. I realize that's a, an interesting term, but like, I think yeah. I, I, I think um, I think we've all played around with the idea of, of, of bidding processes and auctions for the initial flight transaction. Um, and we've all pretty much failed over the years because customers like the idea of certainty when they're initially buying their ticket. They want to be able to plan and they want transparency. But recently we've started to see um, bidding processes work very well for us when people have, have a seat and then they're looking to upgrade their seat. Um, we offer a sort of eBay style experience. And I think it taps into a point we've made a few times on the panel that it's a pretty tactical initiative, right? I don't need too much data. Um, I use a third party. Um, we tap into a travel ecosystem as opposed to build it ourselves. And we, it, customers really have reacted very well to it. Um, they like to take control over the price. We just set a base price, and then we essentially let customers um, get on with it. They can see the prices that their uh, competitors um, on the aircraft are, are paying for or bidding for the seats. They can see how many seats are available. And the really interesting thing is we, we receive more bids or more, more um, transactions as a result of it, and we've seen and I, 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 it's a double digit growth seems to be the theme of the panel, but um, we've seen a, a, a you know, 23% increase in the average fare that we receive um, for each of, these, uh, each of these seats. And I, I think it's kind of win-win. I mean, the customer has absolute transparency about what they're buying. They, they, they pay what they're willing to, to um, invest. And um, yeah, we see business benefits as well. So I think it's a good example of just, you don't need to transform. Uh, actually, there is so much in the airline industry that can be optimized everywhere. Yeah. And even just something as playful as introducing a, a bidding process has, has yielded some substantial benefits for us. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a game in a sense. Yeah, yeah I, th I think it's probably you've got double digit growth I as well because the starting point is airlines are used to selling flight mm. and then selling an ancillary later. And even the term ancillary, I mean, it's an add on, it's an afterthought, it's not even right up front part of the offer itself. So. I do think, unlike some of the other uh, speakers this morning in different parts of the travel industry, airlines still got a way to go, I think, is really how to tap into what does the customer really value, how do I get that out there, not locking the customer into somehow the airline, the strict confines sometimes of the airline value chain, because it, it really does inhibit sometimes the, the uptake. And I think you can break that down. Yeah, and that came through the research again I made of, I think you in the, in the introductory remarks um, touched on it, but it, it's really giving the customer some control uh, of, of defining what that you know, is and at a point you know, that's relevant to them that, that they're gonna uh, say, well, okay, I, w I w actually wanna add that on, or I wanna modify that, and uh, more and more of that is going to be required to have that stickiness and someone else is after your customer that's gonna be a real threat. Hmm. So we're just about out of time here. I wanna ask one final question to all of you, anyone can answer. Um, what do you think is the future of ancillary merchandising? Where do you think this is heading or what are gonna be the big trends we're gonna see in the near future? I think we said it, hyper-relevance. <laughs> <laughs> hyper-relevance, okay. I, I think, yeah, I, th I think we're going to see, well, I come from the system side too, so obviously have a slight bias, but. I think we're going to see much more attention through the hyper-relevance and picking up the data to actually doing very highly um, calibrated uh, optimization, not just of the flight um, or just the ancillary, but bringing those things together and really pitching a top offer to every customer that goes through. Sure. 
Yeah, and, and, and I think we've talked a lot today about the end-to-end -end, um, experience, and I'm, I'm fascinated to see how some of the, the, the companies that have spoken today are going to try and sell our ancillaries. Um, because at the moment, I mainly do it directly to the customer. So I think there's another, there's another layer of optimization, which is how, how do people want to join us in, as, we, as we offer the ability to customize? Um, how, how are they going to sell us as well? Yeah. Well, we're just about out of time here, so I'm going to thank our panelists, John, Kajil, Meg, Tristan. Thanks again. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Left. Yeah.